thank you for the intro. And thank you, everyone, for attending my talk. I know it's uh, getting late on a Sunday, and people are getting tired, but I do appreciate you all attending. Um, so uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the talk. Um, it's not really a technical talk. I'm not going to be able to teach you how to make your website accessible in 45 minutes. <laughs> but what I will do is I will point you in the right direction. And I will, I will expose you to the things you need to know in the hopes that you will go home and uh, do your due diligence, research what I'm telling, uh, you know, what I'm showing you, and um, you know, really uh, figure out the ins and outs of web accessibility and uh, start utilizing it in your development. Um, this particular talk actually came um, from a discussion I had in Boston with one of the WordPress uh, core developers who was working on 4.3. And um, I had introduced myself, and I had told him that I was doing a talk on accessibility. And his first question was, um, what have you committed? How many commits? Um, you know, where are you on Slack? And so on and so forth. And I had to explain that I wasn't a developer. I'm more of an advocate. I haven't developed in a long time. And um, it's not really what I do. It's not part of my job anymore. Um, and so right away, it kind of uh, indicated to me that the, the overall impression or the overall uh, interpretation of what web accessibility is is strictly for developers. And that's really not the case. Every single person in this room can contribute to web accessibility, whether you are a developer, a designer, a content creator, a publisher, whatever, if you run a company. Uh, you too can also contribute. And that's really what this is going to be about, exposing people to the different ways that you can help encourage web accessibility, the different ways you can get involved, and the different ways you can help support the cause. Um, so I just generally like to get a gauge of the audience. So how many people here are developers? OK, good, uh, good chunk. How about designers? Good, good, good. So we got a mix. And content? Anyone that, that does just content? OK. So we've got a good mix, which is great. Um, and like I said, everyone, everyone here can be a contributor to accessibility. And my hopes is that by the end of the day, all of you will be contributors to accessibility. Um, so we'll get right into it. So what is web accessibility? Here's a quick definition that I got from the uh, W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium. Pretty straightforward. Um, four key factors. Um, are perceive, understand, navigate, and interact. And if you think about how people generally um, use a website, those are the four things that are always happening in the brain. You're perceiving, understanding, navigating, and interacting. Right? So the importance or the, the key to get out of that is everyone should be able to do these things with a website, no matter what challenges, no matter what abilities, no matter what skill sets. Um, when you access a website, you should still be able to get those four factors, as well as contribute. So we're not just talking about being able to ha allow websites for end users, but also publishing tools like WordPress. If we can make WordPress accessible, then people with challenges can contribute to the web. Right? So th this is kind of just a very um, brief summary of what's online. There's a lot of information that you can look up. But I think this kind of summarizes it quite nicely. OK, so how does web accessibility actually work? So what I wanted to do with this is um, really simplify what web accessibility is. Generally, when people ask or when I talk about it, it's a bit confusing. So what I wanted to do was um, I kind of built a little diagram that's going to outline exactly what web accessibility is. OK, and I, well, more so how it works in, in, in the most basic terms and, and, and at the most basic level. OK, so we'll start with you. You, 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 any of you. OK, you use a computer. Pretty straightforward. What do you use the computer for? To access the internet. Pretty straightforward. You sit in front of a computer, you type www.whatever, and now you're on the net, and you're, and you're surfing. Now, <laughs> for somebody with a disability or with a challenge, in order to use a computer, they need what's called assistive technology. So that bridges the gap between the person and the computer. So outside of your standard uh, keyboard and mouse setup, there are a lot of other devices out there that actually help people 
um, interact with computers, whether it be uh, a joystick, or whether it be one button, or whether it be a, a, a trackball, or whatever the case may be. There are dozens and dozens of uh, assistive technologies out there. Um, there's a device called uh, a sip and puff device, in which the user simply inhales and exhales into the device, and it interacts with the computer, depending on um, uh, the uh, I, um, like how hard or how soft you um, inhale or exhale, you can do different things. So it may seem like a very basic tool, but it can get pretty dynamic. You can do a lot of things. And for somebody with limited motion, if all they can do is inhale and exhale, they could still operate a computer. And so it's kind of nice. And so like I said, um, in order for somebody with a disability to use a computer, they need assistive technology. So in order for assistive technology to work with between uh, the computer and the web, we've got web accessibility, right? And that's kind of the bridge between um, the, the computer and the web interface. And so essentially, this is what web accessibility is. It's the connection between assistive technology and the internet. So if somebody is using a device that is not the standard mouse and keyboard setup, they're still getting on the net they're still using the web, and they're still doing pretty much what, whatever it is they want to do. And so in, in, in the most basic kind of explanation of what, what, how web accessibility works, it's essentially this. It's bridging the gap between assistive technology and the web. So without web accessibility, you know, people that use different technologies have issues, and that's what's considered you know, inaccessible. So somebody has a different device, they log onto the site, and that device is not interacting properly with the website, because the website has not been made accessible to facilitate that. So in the most layman's terms, this is kind of how it works. Hopefully that, that makes sense. Web accessibility is usability at its, uh, at its core. Right? This is what we're talking about, usability. Good web accessibility is good usability. People can use it, it's easy, it's fluent. I'm sure as uh, designers and developers, usability is a little bit more of a familiar term. People understand what usability is about. It's about the user experience. It's about ensuring that uh, people have uh, an easy time getting to information, an easy time accessing and navigating through whatever it is that they're looking at. Web accessibility is inclusive. So the idea behind web accessibility is to be able to include everyone. You want to make sure that whoever you are and wherever you are, and whatever devices you use, you still have access to the same things, whether it be Facebook, whether it be whatever it is that you're interested in, if it's WordPress, if it's some other CMS, if you want to do banking, if you want to look something up online, um, it, it's all about being inclusive. So the idea is we don't want to exclude anyone from the experience of the internet. Why, why would anyone want that? You know, put, put, put yourself in, in, in a place where you know, tomorrow, knock on wood, maybe you get into an accident. You, have no longer, you no longer have use of your arms. Now imagine you could no longer access the internet. That would be pretty devastating for some of you, right? You built your lives on working with the internet, making your uh, careers off the internet. If that was taken away from you, I'm sure that would be pretty devastating for a lot of us. And so the most important thing is, is that accessibility is for everyone. It's not just for the 20% of people that are born or inherit disabilities. Um, it's not for those that are um, you know, getting older in age and finding that they're uh, encountering more challenges. Um, this particular uh, uh, point, um, I usually like to reference the curb cut effect. Now, those of you who are not familiar with the curb cut, it's pretty straightforward. There's the dips in the sidewalk that levels to the street. That's what a curb cut is. So at the corner of every sidewalk, it dips down so that it's leveled with the street. So you can easily get up and down on the sidewalk to the street. Originally, that was for people in wheelchairs. Well, let's, you know, let's take a second to think about how many other people have benefited from that. People, use, you know, people uh, pushing a shopping cart, people with a lot of luggage, people with a baby carriage. They, they've all have benefited from this curb cut effect. And it was originally an accessibility uh, initiative, but you know, I can't think of a single person that has a benefit from it. So that's kind of the idea when I say accessibility is from ev for everyone. When you make something more accessible for those that really need it, 
everyone else you know, gets to enjoy the ease of that uh, uh, function or, or of that initiative. Right? So accessibility is truly for everybody. It may not be for you right now, but it may be the future you when you get older. It may be the, the, the you that has too many whiskeys and you know, falls and, and breaks something. Could happen, right? But you never know. And so the idea, <laughs> so the idea is that um, we're not just building it for, for, for the 20%. We're building it for everyone and anyone. Okay, so this is a, a, a little quote that I came up with, and it basically states that a small and relatively easy effort can make a hugely significant impact. So web, and that's what I'm trying to say here is that web accessibility is not hard. It's not truly, truly not that difficult. It's all really about the finer details of things, and it's about paying attention to those details, and it's about looking at all the angles. And so, um, you know, if you spend a little bit more time on your website, with a very minimal effort, you can actually impact a lot of people on a, on a, on a very large scale. Uh, and, and, that's so, uh, for, and that, for some people, that's actually you know, the, uh, something that they don't really know. A lot of people have these misconceptions that accessibility is difficult, that it costs too much, that it takes too much time. And realistically, that's not true. A lot of this stuff is straightforward. Any, intermediate to novice developer can easily understand how to do some of this stuff with, with time and with patience and with really digging deep into the fundamentals of web accessibility, any developer can do it. A and anyone can do it, really. Um, so that, and, and that's something that I really want people to take away, is that it's, it, it, it's not this daunting task. It's not something that's scary. A lot of people find it scary. We say web accessibility and they're just like, ooh, no thanks. I, I don't know about that. Uh, you know, it's too much for me. Um, but it's really not. And, and, and what people don't realize is that that small effort can really, really help a lot of people. <clears throat> so this is a quote from an article I wrote for Hero Press. I don't know if anyone's familiar with Hero Press. Uh, a gentleman by Topher DeRosa started it. And he basically collects articles from people who have been impacted by WordPress in some way. And so I wrote an article about how WordPress has empowered me. And um, so th this was a quote from it. And so things like the internet and WordPress can power websites, but they can also empower individuals, right? So people that may have challenges, that have difficulty um, you know, getting out of the house or communicating with people, they can use the internet as an outlet, as an outlet to network, as an outlet to build a career, as an outlet to uh, create their own levels of success and happiness and fulfillment. Right? And a lot of people don't realize that. Um, you know, some, some people, they're, they're really limited in what they can do, whether it be shopping, whether it be you know, researching things, whether it be communicating with friends. Um, they, you know, some people definitely rely on the web more so than others. And, and my take on it is that even though the physical world is full of boundaries, some of which we can't help just because that's the way things are. But I firmly believe that the virtual world does not have to have those same boundaries. If we all do our part, the virtual world can be boundless. And we can all, um, we can all benefit from it in our own ways. And so WordPress and the internet definitely empowered me as an individual because I was able to uh, learn the web. I was able to learn WordPress. It helped me. Um, start to build sites. I started as a freelancer. Now I own a, a company with a team of three. So over a small period of time, I was able to utilize these tools to, to build my own success. And, and that's really important, I think, for, for everyone to understand that um, the internet can be a very powerful thing for, for certain individuals. And you should also check out Hero Press. It's a super awesome site. Topher is a great guy, um, sweetest guy I've ever met. And his intentions are just pure. He just wants to get, get people's stories out there, and he just wants people to understand how WordPress has affected them or impacted them. Uh, here's another quote from the same uh, article, pretty straightforward. Um, WordPress gave me the opportunity to succeed, despite my limitations, despite my shortcomings, and despite my, any stereotypes towards those with disabilities. Right? Some people, um, you know, they judge a book by its cover. They see people, and they don't expect much from them. And um, from experience, that, uh, that does definitely hold true. And so I combated that with 
WordPress. And um, I, you know, when I first got into web development, I was doing everything custom. And I found that it took a lot of time and a lot of effort to get things done. And WordPress cut that time in half. It cut that effort in half. So now I can spend less time in front of a computer straining myself and more time thinking and creating and building which was, to me, hugely uh, important, hugely impactful. It really changed things for me in the long run. I don't know if I hadn't learned WordPress, I might not be doing the same things, right? So I think that, that was a huge um, game changer for me. And definitely what I want people to understand is that uh, WordPress can definitely provide that to a lot of people. Not just me, but others that may have the same challenges, may have the same um, issues, whether it be obvious or inobvious, um, it can definitely be a powerful tool. It'll give you a good idea of what to look for when you're researching web accessibility. <clears throat> so the first one is the W3C WAI, which is the World Wide Web Consortium's Web Accessibility Initiative. And this is kind of where it all starts. These are, this is where you're going to find all the uh, proper definitions, all the terms, all, all, the, all the technical stuff you really need to know, you're going to find there. And they, they were kind of the, uh, you know, they, they, they kind of govern all the standards and whatnot that go on with web accessibility. So the next one is uh, WCAG 2.0, which is the, the specific guidelines, um, all the different areas of web accessibility. Um, th this is definitely where you're going to want to start as well, because once you understand uh, the WCAG 2.0 standards, you'll understand what you got to look for when you're developing. You'll understand what it is you need to do in order to make your sites more accessible. Okay, so we have web accessibility semantics. So this is on the programming end, right? This is like your HTML, your uh, H1, H2 tags, um, ARIA, which is the... Um, Accessible rich internet applications. This is an, ex an extension of HTML that allows you to add more accessible features to your website. And that's strictly on the programming end. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. Uh, we have visual accessibility, right? So that's on the design end. Things like fonts and colors. You want to make sure your color contrasts are good. You want to make sure your fonts are readable and clear. You want to make sure that they're um, understandable. So we have keyboard navigation, right? So being able to navigate. Now, keyboard is, I, I'd like to, I, I don't like that term because I think it's a little bit deceiving because we're talking about devices outside of the keyboard. So keyboard navigation is kind of the, you know, I guess it's a more simple and more comfortable term for people to understand, but it, it has a little bit less to do with keyboard and a little bit more to do with assistive technology and being able to navigate just like that uh, gentleman was doing by clicking buttons. You can get around, you can access different things, you can click on different things, you can move things around. Um, and that, that's, that's really what keyboard accessibility is all about. It's being able to utilize the technology and um, interact with the different software, different uh, websites, and whatnot. So we also have content accessibility, right? pretty straightforward. Your images, alt tags, um, you know, video transcriptions, stuff like that, pretty straightforward. <clears throat> if I had my computer in front of me, I wouldn't have to look back so much. But um, how can I contribute to web accessibility? And this is kind of what I was saying earlier. Web accessibility is not just for developers. Anyone and everyone in this room can contribute to web accessibility. It's really more about, um, and my take on it is more about exposing. If we can expose accessibility to the people that are full-time developers and we get them thinking along that line, I think that, to me, is just as a powerful contribution as me getting my hands dirty myself. If I can inspire developers, WordPress developers, content developers, uh, designers, if I can influence them and if I can uh, educate them towards being more accessible, then I don't need to ever get my hands dirty, which I like. <laughs> I'm not a developer, like I mentioned, and um, so I, I'm definitely not going to be the guy that's going in there and creating patches and fixing things. That, that's just not me. But it, it is for other people, and, that, and, and I want those people to be passionate about um, contributing, you know, whether it be to the WordPress accessibility team, um, getting involved with them, making sure that WordPress as a tool is more accessible. Right? I, did, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting in Boston a woman that was completely blind, and she was building sites and blogging, and I was completely inspired. She said, WordPress is great. 
you know, it, it's the, they're working on accessibility. I'm able to get in there, I'm able to do things. And um, we had a great conversation. And, and to me, that was also what it was about. It was about her being able to install WordPress, set it up, build a site, build a blog, write her content um, without ever having to see a thing. To me, that was, uh, that was empowering for her. Again, another example of being empowered by WordPress. Um, so you don't ne doesn't necessarily need to be a developer to get involved. So how can I contribute? Again, um, social media. Social media is a great outlet. My favorite is Twitter. If we can get out there on Twitter and we can tell people about accessibility and why it's important, then it furthers that exposure. Like I mentioned, we want to reach out to those people that are doing the development, that are on, on the you know, WordPress core team, that are on other CMS teams, or whatever the case may be. If we could spread the word, um, we can influence. If we can influence, then we can reach people on a higher level. Um, and then that, that's really going to snowball and hopefully take a greater effect. So here are some hashtags that you should know. Pretty straightforward, hashtag accessibility, hashtag disability, hashtag A11Y. So I have a little definition here. The technical community refers to accessibility using the nu numeronym. So A11Y basically represents accessibility as a whole, but the, the one and the one represent the letters that are omitted. So any, any word can be transferred into this type of um, this type of method, right? Like localization is L18N. And it's just, you're re replacing the middle words or middle letters with a number to make it short and easy. And then we have WPA11Y, which is the WordPress accessibility hashtag. So using these hashtags, um, the people that are following these hashtags are gonna know that, that, that things are happening. The people that you follow or the people that are following you are gonna know that you're encouraging web accessibility. I actually encourage anyone that's got a computer or phone open now to tweet something about this presentation, hashtag it A11Y, and let people know that you care, that you're here because you care, or that you're here because you want to know more, or that you're here because you want to be able to make your sites more accessible for those that really need it. And I think uh, even personally, I've had great success with this. Um, I, I, I always encourage people to tweet. I've had people that have tweeted me back saying, you know, this is great stuff. We're going to purchase some software. We're going to uh, train our team to be more accessible, and we're going to make accessible sites. And to me, that's what, that, that makes me happy. People really um, being influenced by what people say and what people are doing. And I think you know, it's, it's really a numbers game. The more the power is in the numbers, right? The more people we can get on board, the more people we can get involved, the better everything is going to be. So again, A11Y, hashtag A11Y is the big one. That's, that's probably the more common one that people follow or that people look for. So I definitely encourage people to tweet. If you tweet about me, you can call me an asshole, you can tell me I'm great, I don't care, just tweet it. I don't care what you tweet, just hashtag it. Some, some of you are nodding your head like, yes, he is an asshole, but that's fine. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> so carrying on. Uh, so here are a couple of companies and camps that you can attend. So outside of WordCamp, there's actually an accessibility camp. We have several in Canada. We, there's one in LA. Maybe some of you didn't know that, but they have one locally here. Um, there's one in Australia. So um, we've got DC, Bay Area, NYC, Boston. You know, all these major hubs uh, for technology are getting on board, and they have annual camps. Every year they hold an accessibility camp, and they promote accessibility. They teach people. Um, I do, I, I've, the one in Toronto I've been actively involved in for the last two years. And uh, it's funny because in the WordPress world and the accessibility guy and the accessibility world and the WordPress guy. So it's kind of worked out pretty well where I never really got to change much. It's just a different application. Here's a couple of people. These, these are the more influential people that are out there. These slides will be available. So you don't have to like struggle to write all these down. Um, but these are some of the more influential people. We've got Accessible Joe here today. So, and he was on my list. He's definitely done a lot for the WordPress community. Great guy to talk to, sitting right here in the front. I encourage everyone to say hello, pick his brain. He's done a lot of great work. Thank you, Joe, for being here. <laughs> that is an awesome wave. He's, he's a man of little words, but uh, um, a genius in his own right. Um, and there's also a, a YouTube show 
the Viking and the Lumberjack. Um, so there's a, a gentleman out of Toronto, his name is Billy, and there's a gentleman from the States, his name is Carl, and they work for an accessibility company. And so this company has recently just started a very simple and entertaining YouTube kind of show thing where they talk about uh, accessibility news, they talk about what's happening in the world, and they, they, you know, they talk about what you need to look out for. I definitely suggest anyone that's really interested in accessibility, take a look at their videos. They're, they're a hilarious uh, group of guys, uh, but they're informative as hell. So definitely check it out. I think you'll get a laugh and you'll learn at the same time. Uh, so another way to contribute with web, web accessibility, um, and so my favorite is learning the legislations in your country, right? So if you understand uh, what the laws are and what the rules are, you can better implement that in your, in your projects, right? So the idea is that when companies come to you, uh, like in Ontario right now, um, the law is that a company that has more than 50 employees should have an accessible website. So when a company comes to us and we know that they have more than 50 employees, we're proposing accessibility right off the bat. Not only because it's the right thing to do, but because it's their obligation to the community that whatever communications they have be accessible. So if you understand the laws, you'll understand where they're applicable, and when you need to use them, and when you, know, when you should use them, and when you, got, when you have to use them, um, which I think is important. Um, we also want to encourage the small businesses that are developing websites to not only encourage the developers to be ac more accessible, but they got to encourage their clients too. Without the client's backing, you know, you're not going to get too far. You know, if they say, no, we don't care, blah, 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 then yeah, obviously you're not going to be able to do as much as you should. But if you understand how things work, um, there are two. So I've, I've got the US legislation, which is section 508, uh, and then one from Ontario, which is where I'm from, which is the AODA, which is the uh, Accessibility um, for Ontarians with a Disability Act. And it basically, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a, a variety of rules and regulations that um, are more geared towards uh, government agencies, you know, big companies, uh, education, finance, um, medical industry, you know, just making sure that they're all in line. And, they're, and, the, and the goal in Ontario is that by 2025, they're going to be the most accessible province in Canada. And that to me is exciting because that's my home province. And I hope that I could be a part of that somehow. Uh, but what we're doing is we're encouraging our clients. We're saying, listen, this is the legislation. You know, no one's going to come and sue you if you don't do it, but do your part. You know, don't be an asshole. Do your part. Sometimes they don't like it when I call them assholes, but I don't care. <laughs> okay, so WordPress is WordPress accessible? Um, yes and no. But they are making great strides. So there is the uh, accessibility group. They're out there. Every time a new release of WordPress is coming out, they test it, they, re they audit it, they report back, and they, they try and get as much implementation as they can. And obviously, there are some constraints. Um, because it's being done after the fact, uh, sometimes they just, you know, once you've gone too far in development, it's really hard to roll back and fix certain things. So they do the best they can. They've, they, you know, the, the, um, the, the core team, they've done a pretty good job. Uh, but the, what they really need to do is they need to bake accessibility in from the beginning, from concept. Right? And, and when they do that, uh, they'll have way more success than, than they are now. So there's also, yeah, core accessibility. We've got accessibility-ready themes. This is a huge uh, trend. Uh, I think a couple of months ago, it started out with like a handful. I believe it's now up to like 50 plus. So developers are building accessible re accessibility ready themes. And accessibility ready essentially means that you submit your theme uh, to the WordPress theme review. They audit it for accessibility. If you pass, you get the tag. If you don't, they tell you to fix it. And then if you pass, you get the tag. So you can go onto the theme repository, type in accessibility ready, and you'll find all the themes that are from a semantic and design point accessible. That doesn't mean that you'll get a fully accessible site. You still have to make sure your content is accessible, but it's a good starting point, right? Like I said, it gives you the semantics, it gives you the design, it, it, it gives you a great place to start from. It's a good launching point. I definitely, and, and you know, a lot of them are really good looking too. So most of them are uh, boilerplates, you know, that you just, you download it, you install it, you customize it, you make it to how you want it to look and feel, but everything's kind of already baked in, which is nice. And then we've got a bunch of accessibility plugins. So on the Make WordPress Accessible site, they have a bunch of uh, recommended 
plugins. If you go to the repository, they have a bunch of plugins as well. And a lot of them extend accessibility. A lot of them fix common accessibility issues. There's a bunch of add-ons, like for Gravity Forms, Contact, for seven, uh, Contact Form 7. They've got add-ons to make their forms more accessible. Um, Twitter and Facebook feeds. And, and the list goes on and on. And this, all, th and this has been growing pretty significantly as well. It started out with a few, and now there's just dozens and dozens of them. So definitely all, you know, these, these are all the different areas of WordPress that, you know, the working towards accessibility, working towards making the front end as well as the back end accessible for all. Uh, so um, in terms of WordPress contribution for accessibility, um, there's auditing and reporting. So before a new release comes out, the web accessibility team, uh, you know, sets up the beta, they, they do all the auditing and testing for that new release, and they report back, like I mentioned. So even if you're not a developer, you can still figure out how to test. It's pretty simple. They're, all the tools are available. You don't need to be uh, an expert developer to get it done. You just kind of need to know how to operate the software. Uh, documentation, right? Pretty straightforward if you understand the... So those tools are on that link, personally? Pardon me? Tools to audit and, and see, test your website. The tools are available, yes. Auditing tools are available. Not on that link. That's the link to the um, Accessibility Team Handbook that talks about their auditing process. It's up, there's you know, many different softwares out there that you can use. It's up to you to find the one that works best, but they're all available. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. Nonetheless, they all do a great job. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to know more, go on the website. The, the website for Make WordPress Accessible is going to tell you way more than I can tell you in the next five minutes. So I definitely suggest you go there. Um, so documentation. If you're a good writer and you understand about web, web accessibility, you can help with documentation. It doesn't require you to be a developer. It just requires you to understand a few things and be able to write well. Pretty straightforward. And then obviously we have patches and updates, right? So those that do develop, um, you know, you can get on track. Um, there are different things for uh, the goals of the web accessibility team, contributor day stuff, um, all, you know, all the development end. Uh, obviously, definitely a lot more in that regard, but there's still a little bit of something for everybody. I, I try and contribute as much as I can in the testing realm, again, because I'm not really a developer. So I, I try and help out by testing and reporting back and trying to help out in that way. So these are kind of the things, you know, from a WordPress standpoint that you can contribute to. Again. It's not difficult stuff. For those that are really passionate about it, I definitely suggest getting involved because it's very important in the long run. And um, hopefully, you know, if we can get the numbers, the power in numbers, we can get people on board and we can get people really contributing. So I'd like to open the door to questions. I don't have much time, but uh, if anyone has any, I definitely can take it. If not, uh, I'll definitely be around, so you can ask me, but if anyone has any quick questions right off the bat, I can try and take one or two. Anybody? Yes, sir? Um, how accessible is Google compared to Apple? So, uh, and the guy was, I mean, wow, three screens and he's in terms of, uh, yeah, see, like, right? Wasn't that, wasn't that amazing stuff? Like, yeah. that guy was just whizzing through Adobe. I think it was Adobe he was using. Uh, or no, it said Final Cut, right? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, nonetheless, uh, in terms of accessibility for Google, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, right? When you go to the search engine, it's just like text. What's like so. all they're offering, though, like Android? And, like, oh, um, I mean, I would imagine, I, I, I don't have a solid answer for that, um, but I imagine that they're, you know, pretty on top of things. I mean, it's Google, right? Um, I mean, the one thing that I usually tell people about Google is think about it as like a blind tester. So Google cannot see your website. Google does not have eyes. It cannot ever see your website. But through proper tagging and proper optimization, it can interpret your website, much like a screen reader. A screen reader can only interpret what you tell it to interpret. Google is the exact same way. So usually accessibility and SEO kind of work hand in hand, and they usually help out. But I always like to tell people, like, think of Google as like, you know, your, your tester. Can't see, doesn't have eyes, but it interprets, it understands, because it indexes you, and it, it ranks you, and it says, hey, this is what this person has published. But, you know, and, and that's all through optimization. So it kind of works in the same way. 
Uh, but yeah, like I, the specifics of how accessible all the Google products are and Android, I don't have an exact answer, loaded but question. yeah, pretty loaded. <laughs> Thank you.